The next startup today in the startup showcase is Alpha IC. Alpha IC is a fabulous semiconductor company which designs and develops the best in class artificial intelligence co processors for delivering high performance AI compute on edge devices. Alpha IC's edge solutions include inference Alpha IC's profile. We have amongst us the Chief Scientist, Senior Director of AI, Mr. Suraj. Thank you, Mr. Suraj, for taking out time to be with us today. So the session is all yours. The floor is all yours. Thank you, Surya, for all your kind words and appreciation. Uh, this is Suraj. I have my uh, MD in India, Sanjay Pal Samudram, and colleague Prithi also uh, with, with us. Uh, so the plan is to have, we have, uh, started off with our uh, technology demonstration and we can take up the questions later. I would like to uh, share uh, the presentation. Uh, are you able to hear me? Yes, we are able to hear you. Yeah. Welcome, Mr. Sanjay. Thank you, it's my pleasure. So uh, the agenda here is uh, we'll, we'll actually go through the product roadmap, software stack, performance numbers, what market verticals, what we are looking in, and we also follow up with a uh, demo for edge inference. Uh, some of them are from deep learning. Some of them are from reinforcement learning. We will also demonstrate how learning can be performed on our edge device, and which is something which we feel it is quite unique. We would like to take up the questions after that. So uh, with respect to the roadmap, uh, Alpha IC is, is uh, in, uh, actually looking into edge market. We are, a, we are designing top end a accelerator for especially for edge market with respect to the vision as well as some time, so tech as well. So um, we are operating into the five to 30 watts uh, segment. Um, the currently we, we are planning for uh, eight tops Tera operations compute capability, which can be extended till 64 uh, Tera ops. We have the capability for inference and learning on the edge, which is useful for uh, uh, to tackle some of the privacy concerns, which our earlier speakers were talking about. We have already taped out an ATOPS inference accelerator, uh, which is called Gluon. Uh, we also have an inference and learning processor in the pipeline for 2022. Uh, and we also would like to add up a bit more compute capability in 2023 with additional uh, C32 more TOPS. So we feel that within this compute capability, we could able to tackle most of those Computer vision problems and, and the classical AI applications, and we can accelerate using our edge device. Um, with respect to the proposition, what we have, we have an in house blue on chip, except the PCA and the LPDDR, everything is in house. You name it from standard, starting from the application, followed by the software stack the hardware IP, everything is in-house. And we are looking at the 16 nanometer FinPET TSMC processor node, eight tops performance numbers we are expecting. On on-chip memory is 22 MB, and we have a ResNet 50 performance estimated is 315 images per second, a power consumption four watt and already been taped out. With respect to uh, the software stack, currently we support TensorFlow, and also we have option to convert other framework model to TensorFlow and take it as an input. We have a one-click solution in place to convert most of the deep reinforcement learning problem or even deep learning problem back to the model, whatever we want. We go for uh, a graph-based optimization using graph compiler done in-house. We also have a high-performance API library suited for most of those matrix operations and tensor operations. We also have a good runtime engine, which converts 
which translates the binary generated to the board and seamlessly communicated to the, the binary back and forth from the host so that we can effortlessly execute most of those models in the vision side. So with respect to the stack, we have gone with a modular approach where we go with a conventional um, uh, neural network acceleration with the help of a graph-based compiler. Uh, with respect to the, the performance, we have the numbers um, estimated. Uh, for ResNet, we feel that um, the numbers, what we are seeing is close to 79 frames per second per watt is actually very, very competitive compared to the numbers which we can see in the public domain from our competitors. And also for YOLO V2, we have the numbers close to 13 frames per second per watt. Four images which are 416 by 416 by three, which is the standard uh, input image size for the benchmark, YOLO V2 benchmark. Uh, by the way, we can see that FPS is a good number. FPS per part is another parameter, naturally, we could able to get these numbers with accuracy close to the float numbers. So in that in that sense, uh, this is a uh, this is a good alternative for any of those um, top end uh, edge accelerator. Uh, we can always extend this to another network or any other similar network. Uh, we have the numbers as well. Uh, we would like be publishing that in our uh, website soon. Um, we are also uh, looking to extend it to some other adjoint market, but definitely the prime focus is on the surveillance, the vision-based surveillance systems where I can have a image-based uh, object detection, classification or segment de detection, segmentation as a primary problem. And also we can have some kind of a resolution conversion problem where we can extend the resolution of certain images. Uh, we also have solutions in the automotive space, especially for object detection. And we also extended it to some kind of a, uh, a driver monitoring system application and also the in-house in, in internal uh, uh, infotainment system where I can use the speech as an input and probably convert it into text and, and, and further downstream processing. So um, the, the particular hardware and its power range along with the tops is well suited for um, IoT uh, based applications and smart homes, et cetera. And uh, with additional learning capability, which we have built in, I believe some of the privacy constraints as well as data bandwidth related issues also being sorted out by extending some of the learning capabilities onto the chip. Now we would like to demonstrate um, the performance of the system. Uh, we have thrown it in, in um, multiple platforms. And one thing what we have done is put the solution on the FPGA and also some of the boards. And we would like to showcase uh, some of those classic networks running on our FPGA board. Uh, what we have selected is the classic uh, classification network called ResNet 50. We have put it on the FPGA board. And we also have put a face identification uh, which is an embedding platform followed by a classification uh, as a uh, proof of concept early and, and then we have extended it to uh, other, other network as well. We also did uh, initial benchmarking for uh, YOLO V2, use that, PILI. Uh, these are the object detection network and PILI is close to 170 layers. We have, we have implemented a low precision compute in France on this tip and showcase that we could able to do uh, a low precision inference on our platform using pure intake compute. And of course it is supported by the, the instruction set, which is scattering um, the heavy compute based on tensors. And with the additional stack on top, we could able to showcase a fairly good amount of uh, acceleration. And we will be showcasing it in the video. Uh, on top of it, we have done something called the Deep Reinforcement Learning Network, which something which is, I think um, uh, can be extended to any of the control applications where discrete action is required. And this can be directly mapped to any of the robotic arm movement, some of the gaming. We have demonstrated for gaming though, 
but I can directly stretch it to any of the robotic uh, arm control and I will demonstrate that as well. So I would like to uh, uh, cover uh, the demo first. So uh, what you are seeing here is uh, a ResNet demo working on the RAP, which what we call is the uh, FPGA running at 100 megahertz and also which translated to 0.2 teraops. Uh, as you can see, uh, the ResNet is taking close to uh, uh, 20, 22 millisecond on the FPGA, just running at 100 megahertz, close to 45 frame per second by just running on the FPGA. Uh, we can expect it to be uh, accelerated um, uh, close to uh, eight to nine times when the actual ASIC comes. So this is the snapshot of uh, ResNet running on our FPGA. And uh, I will directly go to the, uh, the YOLO version. Uh, uh, Suraj, uh, we couldn't see the demo. The video is not showing. Okay, sure. Sanjay, can you see my screen now? Uh, yes, we can see now. Sorry, sorry for the mistake. Yeah, so as you can see, uh, the ResNet V1, which is running on our FPGA board, running at 100 megahertz, taking close to 25 milliseconds on the FPGA, which is just 100 megahertz, 0.2 tops machine. So we expect it to be accelerated eight to nine times when the ASIC comes. And also the performance is in line with what we are getting in a float model. We have not done any kind of model optimization. This is the bench, the number as it is without changing, without any of the network structure, neither we prune the network. So this clearly showcases that we, we are able to get a bit exact implementation um, uh, with respect to our reference 8-bit model on the FPGA board using the IP what we have, using the stack, within completely accelerating the neural network. So um, another example, which I mentioned is YOLO uh, uh, V2, uh, which is close to 35 para, uh, operations in compute. Uh, you can see the bounding box appearing, pure intuitive version. We didn't go for any further fine tuning. We didn't change the, the structure of the network. That is an additional uh, capability we have, but we would like to showcase as it is. Um, as you can see, it takes close to 62 millisecond, uh, which is 60, 50, close to 16 frames per second. That itself is okay for a single stream uh, real-time operations. We are able to get it even in a, uh, using FPGA. Yeah, so going back to the next demo, uh, uh, we thought we can showcase another very, very deep network. Uh, so which is called Pili, uh, which is tutored to, actually it is coming from a customer requirement. And we could able to showcase Pili, which is 170 layer network, purely on uh, intake, but in a different mode. And we are showcasing a different approach here where we can actually uh, broadcast the binary to the board and get the results. So in case you have a network, which is quite deep and the, the core takes is high, the code size is high, I have an option to support that as well. Yeah. The performance, we have not tuned any performance to suit our architecture, which is definitely an approach we will be doing in the uh, next um, uh, stage to suit the customer requirement. This is the bare network without compression, without pruning, without any kind of model optimization. So this, this showcase that you know, we, are, we can do the intake computation with our capability of the stuff, the stack and the instruction set. Another one which would like to demonstrate is the phase mask detection. Uh, the, the problem here is to detect phase with and without masks. Uh, we demonstrated in our FPGA platform running at, uh, again, 100 megahertz. Uh, we can see uh, close to uh, 50 frames per second, even in FPGA. Um, and I would say this is itself is can be used for um, any uh, any low infrastructure uh, space where we probably extend our FPGA to, to see whether a person is wearing a mask or not.
we can clearly see that it can detect multiple phases uh, and um, and we are using pure in, in pure intake solution and also using a one click uh, solution to convert the model to the binary what we have uh, to, to be deployed so um, I would also like to showcase another um, very important application. This is the phase identification. Uh, we are using the phase net as a base network and that's classifier at the end. Uh, um, a clear case where we can detect it correctly using intake. And I think it's also fairly uh, important for any kind of uh, surveillance, surveillance application where we would like to showcase or, also, or restrict the entry to the person which authorized by the company or the, the, the security staff. So uh, these are the networks what we have done so far, uh, and we have fairly other amount uh, network also done. But I would like to shock us another network, which is purely reinforcement learning network. I think this is something I don't see anybody else has done it. Uh, we have done pure intake inference of RL network. Um, so this is an Atari environment where the, the system is playing Atari game. Uh, the, as you can see, uh, the agent moved left and right to make sure that the ball uh, doesn't uh, go down and at the same time has to score as many points as possible. So the action here is to move left and right. This is very much useful for any of the classical uh, control application or a robotic arm application where the ro robot has to move by avoiding the obstacle, etc. Uh, so. Uh, we have uh, definitely made use of um, our expertise in the RL space to, to, to have a quantized implementation of the RL. You can see that the score goes up and we could almost able to break it up. So uh, this clearly shows that our processor can uh, do RL inference as well, uh, which is a must for some of those um, automotive, uh, even or not just automotive, but also for control and robotic applications. So um, I have another demo uh, which um, which shows that um, we can also extend it to uh, this to um, another um, uh, network which is called SkewsDeck. Uh, we wanted to showcase this because this is something which we have done years earlier. I would say this is one of the early entrants to intake for object detection. Um, you may uh, see it a bit delayed there. Uh, this is called SkewsDeck intake implementation running on 100 megahertz FPGA board uh, for Kitty data set. So um, Sanjay, were you able to see that? Uh, yes. Okay. So, so basically uh, our, we could able to showcase um, um, a particular network, which is for RL, for as well as for uh, classification, as well as for detection using the same stack through the full in-house technology, using the same ISA, we can cater it to RL classification detection for deep learning or anything which requires a matrix compute. So also we would like to uh, showcase another uh, technology, which um, I believe uh, is a differentiator for us. And, and, and I, we call it as learning with uh, uh, limited data on, a, a, um, I would say edge learning. Uh, as you are aware that privacy is a major concern for most of for most of those, um, I would say most of the Western market. Uh, and we, there is a need for us to preserve the privacy. Instead of that, we came up with an alternative solution that can we extend the learning capability or privacy uh, to a situation where uh, a, a, probably a speech recognition system designed for a particular US accent and I wanted to uh, actually optimize for my, 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 my accent or my Indian accent. Uh, can we do it without actually uh, sending my private information in terms of voice or image back to the server? Yes, we can do, we can extend it. And we have demonstrated learning capability on the edge uh, by uh, definitely making use of additional uh, instructions set and the stack additional precision, et cetera. And we have demonstrated to one of our top end uh, defense research organization so that we can extend uh, classification and detection of certain unseen images and unseen objects on the board. Uh, what I meant is that we can deploy an, a solution in any of the premises and over a time I can update it, which is something which was unheard earlier and which is definitely a niche area. And we are leveraging that at the moment because 
the hardware support is allowing us to update uh, the network parameters and the network itself on the fly, which is, is the mix of learning as well as uh, inference. And, uh, and that solves some of those problems, I think, raised by our early speakers. Is cloud is merging with edge or edge is going to cloud? And this is one of the solutions we would like to showcase. And uh, as uh, this is an output which you could uh, see from our FPGA board, I would show the demo as well. Uh, this we deployed for uh, detection uh, solution. As you can see, uh, uh, a cat and a so cycle one was, to go. Sure, a cat and cycle was not trained. We could able to showcase uh, impact on the board after deploying. And uh, we would like to showcase the demo as well. Um, Suresh, we have only one minute to go. Yeah, so uh, I'm done with that. Um, so probably I would like to take the question. You can show your next demo. Okay, sure. Yeah, so this is uh, edge learning demo. Uh, what we can see is the classification network, trying to classify something which I've never seen after deploying. So you see it, the green color indicates that it could be able to actually classify. So the technology is allowing a combination of inference and learning on the chip, which is definitely required for say uh, image uh, based authentication system where I wanted to add a attendance to a new person uh, after deploying it and we don't want to send the image of that person to the cloud. You see the cat was detected after deploying and there is no idea even for bus. There's no idea about this, uh, whether the bus was even trained. So we could able to showcase the demo of object detection uh, after deploying that particular solution on the edge. So this is definitely useful for any privacy concern or any system which there is a privacy concern or a bandwidth limitation. So we could able to demonstrate our technology for inference and learning. And we would like to take up some of those uh, problems in this area and uh, we'll be happy to uh, help you out in, in accelerating such problems in our platform. Thank you. Thank you, Suraj. Uh, thank you, Mr. Sanjay. Uh, it was a wonderful demo. Thank you very much for giving us the opportunity. So, yeah. so it was a wonderful thank demo. Uh, wish you a very good day uh, and best wishes.